My name's Sam Helm and I study psychology. I was pretty young when I was first experienced uh, bullying, I think, at, at school. I came over from America when I was eight years old after living there for three years. And I remember coming back and, you know, being picked on for having an American accent, you know, by all these young New Zealand kids. That triggered like a little bit of social anxiety in me and um, that kind of hung around for most of high school in all honesty. And it wasn't fun because I fought it. I was a real fighter. When it came to social anxiety, I would just try and push through and you know, I never seeked help, I never talked about it. I just kind of was like, oh, you know, get over it and kind of just tried to push through. I'm Nana and I'm studying neuroscience and I'm here in Australia doing an internship exchange program. When I was like 15, 14, 15, I started to really struggle with anxiety. Situations with other people and even just a small scan on the bus, I used to get so anxious. And I also dealt with like eating issues and not really dealing with that very well and using food as almost a way to deal with anxiety. Um, my name's Christina and I study a Bachelor of Sports Science and Nutrition Science. My journey with mental health um, definitely, I guess, took a turn when I did start going to uni and the pressures and stress that comes with that to show up and be okay, I guess, every day instead of taking the time to give myself that grace um, and just slow things down and check in on myself during that season that I was going through. So when I moved to Australia, it was like a second, a second chance to kind of get over being the new kid. I remember there were instances where I would feel that social anxiety kind of, you know, want to come up, you know, you'd feel that kind of rise in your chest of like a little bit of anxiety. And I remember just kind of just being like, you know, I'm not going to let this beat me. Like I've, I've dealt with this, you know, since I was a young kid. Some of the warning signs for me was definitely when I started feeling very overwhelmed and a lot of physical symptoms came with that. Um, so feeling tired all the time, feeling worn out um, and not being able to cope with just simple things that I used to be able to cope with. So my whole life eventually became a massive focus on what I was eating. Um, I started overeating and um, obviously led to things like binging and purging and stuff like that. When I wanted to like recover and I wanted to not do this and I wanted to like, I wanted to have a healthy relationship with food, um, I was just like, like what is like what is causing me to depend on food in this way um, so it took me some time to actually just like pause and be like okay rather than just doing it like it's normal and going through life like everything's normal actually thinking what's my thought process and what's actually happening in my mind to make me do this it's extremely important to keep on top of your mental health and to not let it I guess get away from you and asking yourself like oh how am I feeling today like Am I coping with these things in life? Because I think we can get so caught up in the busyness of life um, and forget to actually check in on ourselves, which is such an important thing to do. It's not comfortable with the first few times when you're trying to love this thing that you've been fighting against for years. You've been hating it. You've been, you know, I wish I didn't have this thing. Like, why do I have it? All that kind of stuff. And you realize it's actually in some ways a gift because you actually really are forced to kind of connect with the present moment if you have had a little bit of anxiety in the past. You're forced to kind of push into the moment, push into the human experience of feeling fear. It's a normal part of the human experience and we kind of live in this culture today where it's all about running away from you know negative emotions like depression and anxiety and all these bad things and running towards happiness. But actually, part of the beauty, I think, of being a human being is actually experiencing the full circle of the, uh, you know, the emotional kind of cycle that we have inside of us. Every day, I sort of have to remind myself to deal with things rather than turning to numbing or turning to food to, to numb. So there's like, there is like Netflix and there's like alcohol and there's like, there's everything sort of going on. That you almost, you're always busy, you know? So it's always like, I can't stop. So one thing I try to do, especially early in the morning, I stop and I have, um, I have just a moment of just going through what I'm feeling and actually just being like, okay, how do I feel? Like, how am I actually feeling? And if it's, because sometimes when you have a bad feeling, you don't actually know what that feeling is. Like, you don't know how to describe it. You just feel negative. So sometimes I have to stop and be like, okay, what is this feeling? It's actually quite easy to find. I think it seems like it's such a difficult thing, but once you pinpoint what it is in your day, you know, because the feeling comes back up and you do feel that pain, but it's almost a relief because you know what it is. And once you know what it is, you can address it. Experiencing the full circle of emotion really gives you an appreciation for the highs in life, you know, because you actually realize you can actually deal with the lows of life. You're going to start to get small victories. You're going to start to get higher and higher and higher. You know, that more sense of, you know, pride as you know that you're actually tackling life head on. You're not running away anymore. Anxiety gains power when you kind of run away from it. Or if you can get into that headspace of, 
I'm just going to take it one day at a time, victory after victory after victory. That's something that I try to do quite a lot is just make sure I'm addressing what the problem is and addressing what is like what is actually causing this feeling and then actually thinking it through or talking it through with someone and just actually like reassuring myself of what I know to be true and then like almost like comparing it to that, comparing whatever is causing the problem to that. Um, so if it's like I'm anxious about something that's happening the next day, I have to like hold on and be like actually that's not, like that's not now and also I know that whatever happens I'm going to come back home and I'm going to be okay. Like not just being like I'm just going to ignore it or I'm just going to move on and just forgetting that it matters because it's not going to go away. Train your brain when you're off the ball, you know, playing the game off the ball kind of thing. When you're not actually experiencing anxiety in a moment, there are so many other things that you can do to make sure that you don't even get to that space. You know, by eating well, getting around good people, exercising, I think running, because it, it's just so mental. It's just you and the, you know, the pavement and you just your knees and your legs all churning over and, and you know, nobody else is keeping you accountable. It's just you and yourself basically. And those are the moments where I think you build that confidence in those moments to really, when you are in an anxious situation, you have all this kind of subconscious experience knowing that you can get through, knowing you've been there before, knowing you've been to worse places essentially. So some of the things that I did to improve my mental health situation um, was definitely like speaking out and seeking help. So for me that was seeing different professionals at different times um, and I do know at uni they do supply that free counselling for students. So definitely speaking out, it took a lot of the pressure off the whole situation because I was able to, I guess, bring someone else into the situation and get advice on how I can cope with it better. It's okay to say no to the distraction because from that you can actually process what's going on and process your emotions because then you get to know yourself so much better and you're not relying on anything else. Like you're not dependent on food or you're not dependent on Netflix or anyone else. At that point, it like liberates you in a way because you always knew that in any situation, you will always have you and you always have yourself to actually process things. You have time to just stop and think about what's going on so that you have that skill built up for any time in life.